uh, that supervised the activities of the Expedition 67 crew on board the International Space Station. The uh, task for the day today at the ISS is Russian Spacewalk 54, which is being controlled half a world away in this balcony view of the Russian International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karolyov, outside of Moscow. Expedition 67's two cosmonauts, two of the three cosmonauts on board the station, uh, Oleg Artemiev and Denis Madveyev are your spacewalkers for the day today. The uh, commander for Expedition 67, Artemiev, and flight engineer Denis Madveyev, they are suited up in Russian Orlon suits in the Poisk airlock on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station, having just completed the pre-breathing of pure uh, oxygen to cleanse nitrogen out of their bloodstreams and preventing any condition known as the bends or decompression sickness from occurring as they step out into the vacuum of space within the hour. Today's uh, spacewalk also being uh, orchestrated in conjunction uh, with the third Russian cosmonaut that's part of the Expedition 67 crew, that being Sergei Korsakov. He uh, helped uh, Artemiev and Matveyev suit up a couple of hours ago. Korsakov will be inside uh, the Russian segment today, uh, sending commands uh, to operate the 37-foot-long European robotic arm. We'll talk more about the European robotic arm in a moment. That will be the focus of attention throughout the course of today's six-hour, 45-minute spacewalk by Artemiev and Matveyev, the arm, of course, attached to the Nyoka multipurpose laboratory module. Today's spacewalk for Artemiev and Matveyev is the 252nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades, the seventh spacewalk to be conducted out of the International Space Station this year, the fourth for Expedition 67. For Artemiev, this will be the seventh spacewalk in his career. Six previous spacewalks have logged 41 hours and 44 minutes of spacewalking time. Matveyev uh, about to conduct the third spacewalk of his career. His two previous spacewalks, both with Artemiev, uh, constituting 14 hours and 19 minutes of spacewalking time. Artemiev is designated today as extravehicular crew member number one, or EV-1. He'll be wearing the Russian Orlon suit bearing the red stripes. Matveyev is EV-2, wearing the Orlon suit with the blue stripes. The uh, two cosmonauts will be uh, wearing the uh, usual helmet cameras to provide up close and personal views of their work uh, outside of the International Space Station along the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module, where they'll be attending to a variety of tasks in the continuing outfitting of the European robotic arm. Artemiev's helmet camera will carry the number 20 in the lower right-hand corner of your screen when we do receive those views, while uh, Denise Matveyev's helmet camera will be number 18. The uh, work uh, to be conducted by Artemiev and Matveyev outside of the International Space Station today will consist of the installation of a pair of television cameras on the two elbows of the European robotic arm that was launched, uh, attached to the multipurpose laboratory module last July when it uh, was launched uh, from uh, the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan on a proton rocket. They will also uh, deactivate and relocate the external control panel uh, for the robotic arm to a new base connector and hook it up and uh, it will be tested uh, for future use. The uh, European robotic arm uh, external control panel then will be used uh, to adjust uh, some torque mechanisms on the uh, robotic arm and remove launch restraints uh, as uh, they continue to put the arm through its paces in advance of uh, its future use uh, to move uh, payloads and people around uh, the International Space Station's Russian segment. The two uh, spacewalkers, Artemiev and Matveyev, are running about 20 to 25 minutes behind the timeline in their preparations. Nothing significant, just taking a bit longer uh, than had been planned. So we'll be standing by for the depressurization of the Poisk airlock shortly down to vacuum. That will set the stage for final communications and systems checks for the two cosmonauts on their Orlon spacesuits and uh, the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk again planned for about six hours and 45 minutes in duration.
The tasks I just described are better illustrated uh, in about a three and a half minute animation that we have narrated by spacewalk officer Mitch Harger. Let's take a look at the elements of today's spacewalk.
truck uh, that now resulted uh, a couple of hours ago in uh, the huge uh, rocket uh, uh, going hard down on launch pad 39B, 322 feet tall, weighing three and a half million pounds. The uh, space launch system is set to, to lift off from launch pad 39B on August 29th at 8.33 a.m. Eastern time to send the Orion spacecraft on an uncrewed test flight of some six weeks in duration past the moon, a journey of more than two million miles uh, to what is called a distant retrograde orbit with a return to Earth and a splashdown in the Pacific off the coast of San Diego on October 10th. The uh, countdown is scheduled to begin for launch in, on the morning of August 27th, a week from Saturday. There will be a flight readiness review uh, to uh, set the stage for the start of the countdown. That flight readiness review is planned for next Monday. But there, there it is, the Space Launch System on Launch Pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center, awaiting its fueling and its liftoff on August 29th. Meanwhile, back in the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov on the outskirts of Moscow, Russian flight controllers are keeping a watchful eye on the preparations by Artemiev and Matveyev as uh, they uh, continue to pre-breathe uh, pure oxygen, cleansing the nitrogen out of their bloodstreams in advance of the start of the depressurization of the Poisk airlock and the start of today's Russian spacewalk. The spacewalk, uh, again, uh, is measured in terms of elapsed time from the time that the hatch is open until until the time hatch is closed, unlike a U.S.-based spacewalk at the International Space Station, which uh, is measured uh, between the time of the uh, time that a U.S. spacesuit in the Quest airlock is placed on internal battery power until the time that the airlock is repressurized after the crew is back inside. So we'll be keeping uh, close tabs on uh, the Russians' official start time uh, for today's spacewalk uh, that will be marked uh, at the time that the hatch is opened to the Poisk module. While the uh, spacewalk is uh, underway today, uh, space station officials and SpaceX officials will be uh, conducting a weather briefing later this morning to see whether or not conditions are acceptable for the undocking of the SpaceX uh, CRS-25 cargo dragon uh, from the International Space Station tomorrow, leading to its splashdown uh, off the coast of Florida on Friday. Currently, the weather forecast is considered to be marginal. Uh, they'll be taking a careful look at the forecast, both for tomorrow and the backup attempt uh, for undocking on Friday. And uh, we'll be uh, reporting later today as to whether or not uh, the cargo dragon will, in fact, uh, undock from the International Space Station, as is currently scheduled, tomorrow. The International Space Station and its uh, Expedition 67 crew members are currently flying 260 statute miles over the South Pacific, uh, beginning a southwest and northeasterly trajectory that will carry it across the equator a short time from now, and then across Baja, California, and uh, the uh, central and western United States. So as you can see, uh, between uh, the space station and uh, the space launch system, now on launch pad 39B at the Kennedy Space Center, lots of activity ongoing and will continue to be the case. Very busy time for both human spaceflight and the plans uh, to set the stage for future exploration of the moon and beyond. And again, this view of uh, the Space Launch System on Launch Pad 39B at the Cape, hard down after an overnight trek from the Vehicle Assembly Building. Yes, let's do that.
Here in Mission Control in Houston, as mentioned at the top of our broadcast, the Orbit 2 team is on console at this hour. The uh, flight director on console for the rest of the day today during today's spacewalk is Brandon Lloyd. Uh, he will be uh, presiding over this team uh, as uh, they continue to work with their Russian counterparts in support of today's spacewalk. Lloyd, uh, on the right side of your screen, joined on his right by spacecraft communicator Megan Harvey, who will be talking uh, to the crew on board the station inside the International Space Station when required throughout the course of the day today. The two spacewalkers, Artemyev and Matveyev, will be communicating with Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in Karyov, who will be keeping tabs on the progress of their activities outside in support of the outfitting of the and testing of components of the European robotic arm throughout the course of today's spacewalk. Oleg, what's the current pressure for Odeska? And the time left uh, for till the end of the pre-breathe? Zero, zero, five. Five minutes and 15 seconds. Copy. Uh, let's prepare the steps for Q card six. That's the Depress, MRM2 depress, so that's step 9.1. Dennis, go ahead. Uh, the valve is in which position on your suit right now? It was in, at zero, now at one. Please position it to two. And then we'll just do the checks. Okay, I moved it to position two. All right, so pneumatic valve is off. Regulator prime, I confirm prime. Tank prime, yes, confirm prime. Prime fan and prime pump are on. I confirm and pre-breathe airlock depress is open. Yes, I confirm pre-breathe air, airlock depress. Good. So n steps 9.2 were pro my go. Will do. We copy. Okay. So then you said it worked, so now you can move it to position one. 
All right. Well, everything worked before. All right, then. Signal. Uh, Pre-brief. Uh, we have. As you can hear through the uh, interpreter. Uh, for the Russian flight controllers uh, instructing uh, Artemyev and Medveyev on uh, the final procedures regarding uh, the pre-breathing of pure oxygen. This is the uh, precursor to the actual depressurization of the uh, Poisk airlock that will set the stage for the opening of the hatch and the start of today's spacewalk. Artemyev and Medveyev uh, conducted two previous spacewalks together as part of the series of uh, spacewalks to uh, outfit and prepare the European robotic arm for future work uh, in moving uh, payloads, hardware, and people around the, the Russian segment of the International Space Station. They first went out together on April 18th for a six-hour, 37-minute spacewalk in which they installed uh, the external control panel for the European robotic arm, which they today will deactivate and move to a different base point on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. They also removed uh, protective covers from the arm and installed handrails on uh, the Naoka module to facilitate future movement of uh, spacewalkers in that vicinity of the Russian segment. Ten days later, on April 28th, they went back out for a long seven-hour, 42-minute spacewalk in which they jettisoned thermal blankets used to protect the arm during its launch last July uh, on the multipurpose laboratory module. They uh, observed the flexing of the arm's joints, released launch restraints, and monitor the arm's uh, ability to uh, grapple uh, the, the base points on the Naoka module. Uh, the uh, grapple uh, or end effector hands, if you will, the grappling uh, mechanisms on either side of the uh, European robotic arm will actually be tested uh, with the uh, mechanisms that are known as uh, torque rigidizing mechanisms to basically see how, what their level of strength is, if you will, in grasping uh, the base points uh, so that uh, the engineers can have a better opportunity to evaluate uh, the uh, grappling and lifting capability for the arm for future operations, all part of the extensive checkout of the European robotic arm that will join the Canadarm2 and uh, the Japanese robotic arm in the use of uh, robotics uh, extensively over various areas of the International Space Station. So 10 seconds prior to the end of the pre-breathe. Copy. 30 minutes are complete. I copy, 30 minutes complete. So, okay, get ready for step 9.2 on my go, we'll start. And we are ready. You have a go for step 9.2, Oleg MRM2 depress. We copy and work. So, uh, flow selector is moved to injector mode. Confirm, timer, countdown starts. So we are opening the CASDA valve. Position open, confirm. And we'll start depress. And I confirm. The pressure inside the suit is zero twenty-two. Copy. So, so every so often, please give me the pressure inside the suit, as well as inside the MRM. Pressure in the. MRM is 500, inside the suit is 0 
Uh, Dennis, uh, what is the timer? 4.14. Uh, pressure inside the module is 4.50. Inside the suit, 0.38. We copy. So we're within the range. If the pressure is inside uh, this suit. And with that, uh, the depressurization of the Poisk airlock underway. Once uh, the uh, airlock reaches vacuum, there will be a final check of uh, the two Orlan suits for Artemiev and Medveyev uh, before they are given the green light by the Russian flight controllers to uh, open the hatch to the Poisk module that will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. Once the hatch is open, the two cosmonauts will install a protective ring around the uh, circumference of the hatch uh, that uh, protects uh, the delicate seals of the hatch against any micrometeoroid uh, hits uh, during the time it's exposed uh, to the vacuum of space. Matveyev will be first out of uh, the Poisk airlock. He will uh, set up uh, tools and tethers and uh, the bags of equipment that will be used uh, for today's spacewalking tasks. Once uh, he's outside, a few minutes later, Artemiev will join him, and then they will uh, turn their helmet cameras on and move uh, to the uh, European robotic arm to begin uh, the work associated with the installation of the first of two elbow cameras on uh, the European robotic arm. Pressure inside the module is 240. 038 inside the suit, 038 for EV2 as well. We copy, that's good. Module pressures 200, suit is EV1038, EV2038, copy, that's excellent. What's the time uh, left? Uh, one minute, 49 seconds, we copy. Uh, pressure is 150, suit is 038 and 038. We copy. That's good. One ten zero three eight and zero three eight. We copy one hundred inside the module. We copy. And we got the tone. Ninety in MRM two, copy. And what's the uh, pressure counter? It, what what time is on the counter? Five minutes has passed. And unintelligible injectors off off. This view of the Poisk airlock on the uh, space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station 
Uh, attached to Poisk is the uh, Strela boom, the Strela being the Russian word for arrow, which is a telescoping boom uh, that is extended to facilitate the movement of uh, spacewalkers outside uh, the areas of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Inside Poisk at this time, clad in their Russian Orlan spacesuits, Oleg Artemyev and Denis Matveyev, who have begun the depressurization of the Poisk airlock in advance of the opening of the hatch to begin today's spacewalk. Artemyev, uh, the Expedition 67 commander, will be wearing uh, the Orlan suit with the red stripes as EV-1 or extravehicular crew member number one. Denis Matveyev, EV-2, extravehicular crew member number two. He'll be in the suit with the blue stripes. And uh, the two cosmonauts will be equipped with helmet cameras. Mat uh, Artemyev's helmet camera will have the number 20 in the lower right-hand corner of your screen once we receive those views. Matveyev's helmet camera will be number 18. Now you're looking at the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. At the very top of your screen is the Prashal node module that is attached uh, to the very top of Naoka. The node module uh, will uh, serve as a multi-hatched port for arriving Russian vehicles in the future. Naoka, again, will serve a dual purpose as a science laboratory and an airlock uh, for uh, future Russian spacewalks. And there is a good view of the European robotic arm, double grappled, uh, which uh, will be going through its paces today. The uh, movement of an external control panel from one location to another on Naoka, and uh, assisted inside by uh, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Korsakov, he'll be sending commands to um, test uh, the torque Rigidizing, rigidizing mechanism uh, on uh, the two end effectors or hands of the European robotic arm to test uh, basically the uh, hand strength of uh, the end effectors uh, in advance of their future use to move uh, equipment and people around uh, the International Space Station. The uh, two cosmonauts will also be removing launch uh, restraints. They'll be installing uh, two elbow cameras on uh, the European robotic arm, and uh, if time permits, uh, may uh, get to a get-ahead task uh, to replace a uh, protective window on uh, one of the end effectors camera and uh, light units uh, that uh, requires a, a new external window uh, just to make sure it uh, has a clear view of uh, the work that will be conducted outside of the Russian segment of the station in the future. All right, 20 millimeters is the pressure in uh, MRM2, and I'm putting the um, valve in O2 open EVA. I see O2 open, copy, that's good. All right, stand by for MRM at 12 millimeters, and then put CASD2 in uh, closed manually, and then um, CASD SO closed manually, confirmation, and then CASD SO open on the POV panel, EVA support panel. Copy. The pressure in MRM2 is 15 millimeters. We are at 12 millimeters in MRM2. We are closing KSD. 
two and it closed. So first KSD two and then KSD SO closed, closed. Both of them are closed. KSD one is closed. And um, the LED is no longer for KSD SO is no longer illuminated. KSD SO открыт is no longer illuminated. So for the uh, for MRM final leak checks, give me the pressure numbers. 12 millimeters currently. Copy. All right, and let's stand by for um, the five-minute timer. And then you will be switching on to transition to autonomous power after that. Copy. The uh, depressurization of the uh, Poisk airlock is continuing uh, in good shape at this hour. Artemiev and Medveyev are about to place their suits on internal battery power, and uh, they will conduct final leak checks of their two Orlon suits. All of their suit-up and uh, preparatory activities have gone very well throughout the course of the morning as you take a look at the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the European robotic arm, which will be the work site for Artemiev and Medveyev throughout the course of today's spacewalk. Good view of the uh, Poisk airlock on the International Space Station, in which uh, Oleg Artemiev and Denis Matveyev are conducting uh, the depressurization of that uh, airlock down to vacuum to set the stage for the opening of the hatch and the start of today's spacewalk. Again, this will be the 252nd spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades, the seventh out of the International Space Station this year, the fourth for Expedition 67. This will be Artemiev's seventh spacewalk in his career, adding to his total of 41 hours and 44 minutes of spacewalking time. Denise Matveyev uh, will be uh, going outside uh, into the vacuum of space for the third time, having accrued 14 hours and 19 minutes of spacewalking time on two previous spacewalks. We have about one Point five minutes left, so nine, 90 seconds left, and we'll be standing by.
Five minutes is up. What's the current pressure in MRM2 per the MV? The same. The pressure is the same, 11.5. Great. Now, move on to Q card 7, step 11. We are ready. Russian flight controllers now reporting good leak checks. We have two good suits. Artemiev and uh, Matveyev in the final stage of their preparations before being given the green light to open the hatch once uh, the airlock reaches vacuum. I am at six. Good. Fresh in the suit. 0 0.35 for me. Let me 0 0.30 unintelligible. All right, we are switching on to autonomous power, deactivating the pump. We are transitioning to the primary one, turning on the pump and the fan uh, one after the other. Well, if necessary. Yes. You can proceed. All right, I'm at auto I'm in autonomous power. 28.3 is uh, the pressure for the first one, and uh, primary pump and primary fan should be on, Oleg. They are on. And verify that uh, power to the primary fan and pump is on, and the transmitter is on. Right. We are deactivating the heat exchanger tow mode. Tow heat exchanger power tow is off. Turning it off for suit one and suit two. The suits are off on the call panel. We are disconnecting the electrical umbilical. Unintelligible, Oleg. And then the electrical umbilical Connector should be covered with MLI. Affirmative. All right. Suit one, electrical umbilical. Copy, Oleg. I'm covering the electrical connector with the MLI. And I have mine disconnected. We copy, Dennis. You don't forget to cover the electrical connector with MLI. In work. as much as I can. And let's uh, stow it so that it's not in the way. All right, and we tuck that little tail away. All right, let's continue. We are disconnecting the fluid umbilical. Affirmative. We have it disconnected. Copy. Put it in, um, please. Put MRM2 BSS or LAN interface unit in position O2 closed. O2 closed. All right, we have the caps, caps here. Oleg, what's the current pressure? On the Udus Carolan pressure gauge, I have 0 0.37. And 
I am at 0 0.36. All right, so 0 0.37 for suit one, 0 0.36 for suit two. PO2 primary, what's the uh, top line showing now? 426. Copy, 426 and 4. And what's for you, Dennis? 422. Copy, 422. So, fluid umbilical. Cover it up. Cover it up with stoge cap and the uh, MLI flap. In work. Done. And I covered mine up too. So the valve is closed. All right, copy. The valves are closed for both of you. Guys, good luck to you. I'm handing you over to the EVA specialists. We'll hear each other again during the repress. Thank you and thank you. All right, your hatch. All right. Position yourself. Oleg, Dennis, good day to you. Well, Sergey, good to hear you. Hello, everybody. Let's stand by for the command to open uh, EV hatch, and we stand by for go, and you can start working. That sounds good. Oleg, Dennis, meanwhile, please verify that safety tethers are attached correctly. And um, I have an intelligible attached to the handrail. Copy, Dennis. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the depressurization of the Poisk airlock is now complete. Standing by for uh, the next few steps that will uh, result in the opening of the hatch to the uh, Poisk airlock and the start of today's spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev. Oleg, Dennis, you have a go to open EV hatch. There will be a brief LOS, so please follow all the um, all the steps for the hatch opening. And once you get to the end of those steps, stand by for our further recommendations. Copy. So. Put a V-hatch in the operational position. The the hatch opening tool should be in the operational position. All right. It's in the um, operational position. Copy, Dennis. Now verify that four screws for emergency hatch closure are all screwed out to hard stop. One, two, three. We uh, 
are handing over uh, communications between satellites on the tracking and data relay satellite system about to regain uh, voice communications. We are here. There was a brief LOS. Please continue and verify that the um, hatch um, handles are in position closed. Copy. So install the hatch opening tool on the hatch cover. Turn it to hard stop counterclockwise. In work. And verify that the rollers are aligned correctly. They are rolling. Copy. You have turned the hatch opening tool to hard stop, right? Give us a second. All right. Copy, Dennis. So the um, so the handle for the pusher to hard stop. Done. And you have a go to open the EV hatch. In work, Moscow. Once you open the EV hatch, please verify that there is no FOD. And once you see the little crack appear, please report. Unintelligible. The hatch is open. The EV hatch is open. It probably got sucked in a little bit. And, oh, right, copy. It's kind of hold the pusher because it's still not being cooperative with all right, let's try it. And now it's completely open. So you need to take the French hook now. Yep, I've got the French hook now. Please secure the French hook to the hook on the piano. All right, here it is. Got it. Great. And based on that, on how you attach the French hook, you can select the slack. All right? There we go. We have secured the French hook to the uh, handrail on panel, panel 201, on the bracket on panel 201, copy. And now you need to select the slack for the um, tether selected. And we set it to the slack that we need. Copy. And now install the protective ring. Mm -hmm. All right. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the hatch is open to the Poisk airlock. And, uh, we are standing by for the verification of the exact time from the Russian flight controllers. We should have that a moment or two from now. But uh, today's spacewalk officially underway with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk module. We'll have the official start time momentarily. We had a short drop. Drop out. Have you, um, do you have the um, protective ring? Yes, we do. We got it out, and now we are ready to install it. And I can see my end and um, check yours. All right, I need to rotate a little bit more. Okay, sounds good. So you are installing the protective ring on the hatch. Yes. Okay, that's good. And we turned it a little bit. Oleg, Dennis, once you have the protective ring uh, installed, please turn on your sublimators. Sounds good. Let us 
let me try. And mine is installed. I got my side. And I got mine as well, my side as well. So the protective ring has been installed successfully. So verify that um, it is in position closed. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, the official start time for today's spacewalk confirmed by the Russian flight controllers in Korolyov as 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Russian spacewalk 54 the 252nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly maintenance and upgrades now officially underway. Again, the start time officially pegged at 8.53 a.m. Central, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Sublimator for EV-1 is on. All right. Sublimated for EV2 is on as well. Oleg, there was a short dropout. So please confirm that the sublimator for both of you are on. They are. Unintelligible. Copy. So please egress MRM2 towards the Shela operator post. All right, I have one uh, French hook. Are you ready? Let me um, unintelligible secure it. And you are moving to the left. Yep. All right, I got one uh, a hook with me. Um, actually, Oleg, let me uh, turn around. It's going to be easier in that position. secured in outside and um, I am ready to egress and we are watching uh, Dennis Oleg you please um, get two uh, bundles ready uh, we are doing it as we speak and um, I just started feeling uh, the cooling. Uh, same for me. This is Dennis. Так, 
Все, второй даю. All right, I'm gonna give you the second uh, bundle. Олег, Денис, вы... Are you in control of it? Да. Yes. Это хорошо. Can you move it out of my way a little bit? With the uh, spacewalk underway at 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time, Denise Matveyev uh, poking his head out of the Poisk airlock as he uh, gathers uh, tools and crew lock bags filled with equipment that he and Oleg Artemiev will be using on the um, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. Uh, to work uh, with the European robotic arm, a variety of tasks, including the installation of two cameras on the elbow areas uh, for two camera and light units uh, for the arm, the removal of uh, launch uh, restraints from uh, one of the two end effectors or hands on opposite ends of the 36-foot-long uh, European robotic arm. They will also work uh, to uh, deactivate and relocate an external control panel from one so-called base point to another on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module for the external control of the arm during future operations. They uh, will be working uh, with the two end effectors along uh, in tandem with Sergei Korsakov, the other Russian cosmonaut inside the Russian segment of the station, to test uh, the torque rigidizing mechanism on both hands or end effectors of the European robotic arm, essentially testing uh, the strength of those two hands to grasp and release varying uh, objects. And if time permits, there are a few get-ahead tasks, uh, including uh, the uh, replacement of a protective window on one of the camera light units on one of the two end effectors uh, of the uh, European robotic arm, but that's only if time permits, as well as uh, the extension of uh, one of the two telescoping strela booms from the Zarya module uh, to the uh, Poisk module, if time permits. Again, those are get-ahead tasks, uh, not primary tasks, and if uh, time does not permit the two cosmonauts uh, to uh, conduct uh, those uh, secondary objectives, they'll be uh, deferred to another spacewalk downstream. Could you check your tool caddy and see if you have a uh, range uh, 220 uh, on the tool caddy? Yes, um, I, I do, but I only have one. And what about um, era wrench uh, six? Uh, I have the same as um, what Oleg has. We split it up. Excellent, thank you. Sergey, two bundles are out. Copy, Oleg. Uh, we see you, and we are waiting on uh, you to uh, get um, the the rest of the stuff you need with to take with you uh, outside. Okay, uh, my tether hook is uh, safely secured outside. Okay, um, EV1 is out. Okay. 
Okay, uh, please check your cameras. We lost the image from the camera. We have the camera uh, on the right and the lights next to the camera. Does it feel warm or cold? It's more on the chilly side. Oh, like. Okay, wait. I, I'm not seeing. Uh, anything on my right? Yeah, we're just looking at the temperature and it's pretty high. But you're pretty far away from um, the arm. Okay. Um, here's the problem, Oligan Dennis. Um, right now you're at 17 degrees, which is um, expected. Uh, go ahead and um, activate both um, a temperature control systems and. Uh, Pull, uh, the temperature. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, you're looking on the left side of your screen at uh, Expedition 67 Commander Oleg Artemyev. In the zero position. Um, and uh, at the bottom of your screen is Denise Matveyev, both outside of the Poisk airlock hatch. The hatch was opened at 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, to uh, mark the, the start of today's spacewalk. The seventh for Artemyev, the third for Matveyev. They're in the process of uh, gathering all of their equipment uh, before they move uh, to the work site on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module where the European robotic arm resides. The arm uh, having launched on uh, Naoka last July on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Okay, now we need to figure out how to position the equipment bundles in ORU bundles. Uh, give me this one, please. Um, this one you're going to attach to your um, a short tether. Uh, most definitely, Dennis. I have the bundle on me. Uh, that's EV1. And I have the second bundle on me. That's EV2. Um, say that again, please. Um, what I said is um, we have um, affixed uh, the bundles on each other's suits 
and we are ready to translate. All right, then um, uh, let's go ahead and translate towards um, uh, the um, uh, Strela base point. Wait, wait, Dennis. Stand by. Can you hand me uh, my tether hook, please? Thank you. No, I think you gave me yours. Um, uh, let's, uh, attach it to the handrail. Hang on to it. Um, hold on tight. And, uh, Moscow, we're both secured to the ring. And we are about to unlatch uh, the ring. The ring is um, unengaged or disengaged. And uh, that is where we need to go, Dennis. Um, do you see uh, where? era is Oleg um, uh, what are you busy with right now um, I am making sh sure that um, uh, Dennis is uh, doing the right thing Dennis and what are you doing I'm doing the same thing to Oleg Okay, so let's um, start to move slowly. Be very careful around the solar arrays. They make them in useful one day. Hey, MLM. Haven't seen you for a while from the outside, that is. Hello, I think we're here. This is Oleg, um, one of my um, tether hooks uh, got snugged. Okay, and both of my uh, tether hooks are now hooked to MLM. We copy Oleg. And this is Dennis. Uh, I can work with mine now. And you did um, secure um, as to ooh, is that correct? 
Uh, that's line item seven in the timeline. Yes. Uh, didn't we already report that to you? Mm, probably. I, I just missed it. Should we continue translating? Yes, uh, you need to continue uh, traveling in a straight line until you get to handrail of forty one uh, fourteen. We got to the handrail. Dennis, this is uh, where you should be when you uh, made the connectors. Okay, this is uh, EV1 uh, reporting um, that um, I uh, have uh, reached uh, the adapter. Copy, and then Oleg, you're going to be uh, translating towards the cameras. And uh, you need to choreograph it um, uh, in such a way that um, once you start moving back, you need to be uh, leading the way. Your wish is my command, Sergey. 
This is Mission Control Houston uh, approaching the half hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev setting up uh, their equipment at the work site on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. They are working uh, in close proximity to the European robotic arm, which is the focus of attention for today's spacewalking tasks. The first of which will be the installation of uh, one of two uh, camera light unit uh, elbow cameras. They'll be uh, installing uh, those uh, cameras uh, on both uh, elbows of uh, two of the camera light uh, units that exist on the robotic arm to uh, assist uh, flight controllers uh, in uh, their perception of the work uh, that uh, the end effectors of the arms will be doing uh, during uh, future spacewalking tasks. Arm. Uh, to watch, uh the European robotic arm launched on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module last July when uh, Naoka was launched on a proton rocket from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. Denis Matveyev is wearing the Orlon suit with the blue stripes. Right behind him is Oleg Artemiev wearing the suit with the red stripes. And uh, um, you guys um, now have 13 minutes um, of rest uh, while Sergey is uh, controlling um, the air motion. Uh, so that will give you plenty of time to uh, swap places, to to rehook your tethers and so on. And Oleg, um, make sure that um, um, uh, there's a uh, panel of six uh, next to uh, the grapple fixture. Um, so please try to stay as far away as possible from it and do not um, have any contact with it. Okay. And um, we lost the view from uh, both uh, of your helmet cameras. From both Orlan cameras? That's a firm. Um, I power cycled mine and um, both uh, uh, lights are uh, lit for EV1 and same for EV2. So, Dennis, um, do you have both lights uh, illuminated? Uh, yes. Look, um, it just got unhooked. Okay. Uh, Sergey, um, the one in, in MCC Moscow, um, um, are you getting uh, any video from our uh, helmet cameras? Um, unfortunately, we did not uh, get the video back. Okay, well, we don't know what to do uh, because uh, on both of our cameras, the both lights uh, are on. Copy. And um, uh, be aware that um, air 
uh, is in motion now. Copy. From inside uh, the Russian segment of the station, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Korsakov is sending commands uh, to move the European robotic arm into the correct uh, orientation for the installation of the first of the two uh, camera light unit uh, elbow cameras. Uh, Oleg and Dennis, can you hear me? Uh, that's a firm. I just wanted to do a bomb check with you. Copy. Do you have the video? No joy on the video. No video at all? Um, all we're getting is the view from the ISS cameras, unfortunately. Олег, Денис, включите светильники. Через полторы минуты у нас начинается тень. Олег и Денис, please turn on the lights, um, because um, uh, in about a minute and a half we're going to enter a clip. Copy. Um, we never turned off uh, the U.S. lights. Um, you you don't have the. Um, uh, Orlan lights on? Um, no. Um, we're kind of trying to uh, conserve their service life. Okay, now we're going to maneuver uh, the arm, and if you see any um, uh, any signs uh, of um, uh, the arm getting close to a uh, station structure or any of its elements, uh, please let us know right away. Copy, will do. So mine are on. I think uh, let's check the lights. Okay.
I want you to rehook you. Are you holding on? Yes, I'm holding on with my hand. I'm holding on to the adapter platform. Олег Денис, как у вас получается Олег, наблюдать Денис? манипулятор его перемещения? Are you able to observe the arm moving? Темно. Темно, вот оно. It's kind of dark, but we are doing our best. Что-то там врачи двигается. Something is moving in the night. Хорошо. All right. Камера утечь пока не заработала, да? And uh, the camera is still off. Is that right? We are beginning to get some image. Everything is according to the timeline. So far, and waiting for 20 minutes here. Is Eka operating? Yes, it is operating. Mine, uh, I think the indicators are still off. Uh, I will need to switch this off and on. Did you see this timeline on the box? Disappeared. He doesn't want to talk to us. Okay, what was your question? Did you see the timeline right here? Can you see this? Unintelligible. And he has a birthday today, so we can see this. Sergei's. Sergei has a birthday, yes. That's, that's why we, we, we think about him. Okay. Hello, hello. I'm right here, and happy birthday to you. So we are sending our birthday greetings to everybody who has a birthday today. So we don't see exactly where the arm is moving, but it is fairly far already. It is in parallel to the handrail. And is uh, already approaching the place where we will be installing the camera. Very good.
Так, ну что? Так, ну что? So, what's now? It keeps moving. Are you able to see the arm? We'll see the end defector clearly. You can probably see the end effect as well. We have about nine more minutes to go. What if you move the camera this way? Yes. We can see in this position better. Unintelligible. Uh, it said we have uh, no satellite to deploy today. It would be nice to do that on his birthday. Era keeps moving, keeps moving. In parallel to MLM at this time. Good. So we just keep waiting. our next steps. We'll be installing a seal you camera. And uh, we'll be translating. So translating, no, that's the, this is your time for rest. That's what you are doing. Just make sure you will be well rested. There will be no time to get tired. Then we'll translate to CLU4 installation area. Very good. Did you take the camera? If it, it seems to still be attached to me. And all the lights uh, can be turned off at this time. That is done. Yeah. 
Это слабая батарейка, да? Это правильно. Так, все ближе и ближе манипулятор. So the arm is getting closer and closer to the installation area. Perfect. And would you assess the distance? Maybe a meter, one meter, ten centimeters. Ира is uh, moving silently, very quiet. Сергей is doing a good job. Well, we've been training it, so now it is well trained. That was different last time. So not able to see the end effect at the time. Well, we, because we turned away, uh, can you please show us one more time? No problem. Uh, let's start translating to the camera installation area. Are you still able to see the arm? Yes. Wait a second. Uh, you are in my way. Okay. That's good now. I think we are good.
Okay, let me get closer to you. Yes, uh, translating now. Which handrail do we have? It will be closer to the installation platform. 4102. Copy. 4102. Stand by. We have just arrived. We need to look around. Okay, I see where the arm is. This is the installation area. And the lab is over there. So this is the location, right? We are by country number one, and here we can get attached. Yes. Prepare still your camera. And the installation is now go. Okay, copy. Okay, then go ahead, prepare it. I have two hooks on me here. This is Mission Control Houston. We're approaching the one hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev. They uh, began their spacewalk at 8.53 a.m. Central, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time with the opening of the hatch to the Poisk airlock on the space-facing side of the International Space Station. They are uh, in the process of um, setting up uh, all of the tools associated with the installation of the first of two cameras on the elbow areas of the 36-foot-long European robotic arm. The uh, camera light units that help uh, illuminate uh, work that the arm will be doing along various uh, areas of the Russian segment of the station in the vicinity of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. These elbow cameras uh, to be installed will provide uh, great uh, visual cues for uh, the Russian cosmonauts working not only inside uh, the International Space Station's Russian segment, but for the spacewalkers of the future themselves. And this is the hand. Okay. So the connectors are on my side. And it needs to be facing the end effector. Please uh, check again uh, the number that is written on the camera. It says crew 4. CLU 4. 
Отлично, да, хорошо. От огни таким образом, чтобы она не мешала для установки камер. Там должна быть ворсовка. Just bend it away, so there should be... От огни, чтобы она... Придержи, да. Придержи, а Денис... Velcro on the side, perhaps. Or maybe you will just hold on, so it's not in the way. So make sure it's just it's out of your way. Okay, we will do that. So which range shall we using first? Era 6. Okay, I... Have it. Okay, I will hold on to the flap and you will push the, the camera onto the installation spot. All right. Okay, that's, that's working out. So, I watched, uh, look, there were two uh, openings, not three. No, that is correct. So it is going to be attached on three bolts. That is correct, three bolts. Okay, now I'm screwing them on. Okay, we need a third one. No, no. So this one. This will go first. Uh, just engage them first. Now the ratchet range. Right after engaging. You can you can try the ratchet range at this time. May work. That's what we are talking about. No, I thought we should engage it also more. At first. Олег, Олег, сюда не надо пока устанавливать. Устанавливаем болт номер два. Нет, я начинаю с первого. Это должно быть первым. Нужно притянуть болт номер два, номер четыре, номер пять. Номер два. Номер четыре. Номер пять. Don't touch bolt number um, five. Uh, don't, don't touch number six yet. Okay, start with number four. Yeah. Right? Yes. Tight and number two, number four, and number five. Да, вот этим ключом ЕР-6 просто от руки Четыре, should I get the uh, right away or by hand first? By hand first. Okay. Two done. 
No, number five. Not six. Number five. All right. Also, if convenient, you can attach the handrail as well. What am I supposed to hold on to? Okay, okay, no, just forget it. Because it will need to be secured by tether first. Okay. Uh, stand by, let me adjust the position, and uh, I will try to hold it on here. Okay. Who decided to design both like that? Mm -hmm. So it's not quite engaging, but okay, three bolts have been tightened, at least preliminary. I understand that the ratchet range is in the crew lock bag. Yes. All right. Well, we have the ratchet range. Yes, it's probably in another. Yeah, we're looking for the ratchet range. All right. During the same, we were saying, era 5, era 6, now we're calling it ratchet range. Yes, it should be era 4 range. And the retainer, you can move the boom retainer to the side, to the left. Yeah. Holding it here. And number five is tightened. And four has been tightened. So we are returning the wrench back to inside the bundle. All right. And now we're working on mating, demating. Yes, you should take era six wrench and install in place. Era six is the regular one, right? It's like a spanner. We need to rotate counterclockwise. Look at that. Okay. Now I can see it. I can see it. So we start rotating. Do you want to hold it? Are you starting to rotate it counterclockwise? And please uh, monitor the indicator. Right. 
Can you lift? This view from a helmet camera on Denise Matveyev. One hour, nine minutes into uh, the spacewalk as he and Oleg Artemiev work uh, on the installation of the first of two camera light unit uh, elbow cameras. These cameras uh, will provide uh, visual uh, acuity and cues for uh, future spacewalkers and for the Russian cosmonauts working inside the International Space Station operating uh, the European robotic arm that is affixed uh, to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. This, the first of the tasks on tap for today's spacewalk that began at 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Can you ask again? Uh, can you tell me again? 26. It's 26. We copy, Oleg. That's good. Sounds good. Indicator shows half. It went through the half mark. We copy. Three quarters. In the position mated, connected. Well, it needs to go to the very end, right? Well, can you try the other connectors? Yes. The indicator should be at the end position. Yes, I understand, but it's still rotating. That's it. Uh, it has been tightened up. I copy, Oleg. Now take the wrench, and we'll be closing the mm -hmm. MLI flap. All right. So MLI flap is closed, but I understand that it does make much of a difference. So where shall we take the handrail? Through log bag. And you should secure it with one of the tethers. All right. All right. That's very interesting. Where is the cover? Oh, it's not a cover. It's not like a cap. Is it going through? I've got it. I think we can loosen it up even more. It has been loosened up. All right, let me take my tether away. So I've removed mine. And hold on here. All right. Sergey, about that hook 
that was connected to the camera, what shall we do? The hook that is on the tether side out, the tether. It's a safety tether, right? The camera has been installed. What's important is once we install the camera, we need to have the number, the serial number for it. You can come closer, then you can start movement. And then please remove the cover, the cap. Yes, uh, don't forget about the cap. Yes, it will be much better with the cap. Of course. Yes, so these were some additional means we've installed. Unintelligible. Is it working? Hello? Yes, I've secured it in place. So first I have to remove the cap. So I took a photo of the serial number for the camera. So the cap has been removed. We copy. All right. Yes. Don't forget about the cap. Let's do it. Artemiev and Medveyev have now installed the first of the uh, two elbow cameras on uh, the European uh, robotic arm. They uh, began uh, the spacewalk about 30 minutes uh, behind schedule, but have made up the time as they've gone along and are just about right on uh, the timeline for the day. There's a good view of uh, Oleg Artemiev in the uh, Orlan suit with the red stripes on the left, joined by Denise Matveyev on the right. The next task uh, for the two spacewalkers will be the removal of thermal insulation from one of the two end effectors or hands on the European robotic arm that uh, covers a series of launch restraints. Yes, I'm just saying that'll be the regulation of TRM. Let me turn the camera off. Yes, it's off, OFF. Okay, now give me the cover. We will place it. Well, we can find it easy. In, yes, I don't. I think we might need it again sometime in the future. Sorry. Give it to me. I don't see it. Where is the ring? 
On your side, okay, the large hook. Oh, it's uh, installing itself practically. Shall we leave? So are we translating back? Shall we go? Let's go. So we're translating. Although this camera probably should have been installed here. That's more handy, but that's okay. I think you caught uh, the antenna with your bag. All right, I copy. VTO3. Are you ready for VTO3? Yes. And I have vacated some space on this side. All right, we'll need to secure it. It looks a bit different. We just need to figure out what should be what and where. I guess it'll work the way it is. Yes. We just need to secure it in place. Okay, take your small hook on your side. All right. All right. And I remove it. And here it is. Just pull it, pull it. All right. Second bolt. Yeah, the second bolt is on my side. Uh, let me put a wire tie on it. And your finger is actually holding on to the big protective ring. Yeah. That is true. Oleg, Dennis. Yeah. Go ahead. Oleg. Uh, turn off 
last year, and the handle cold heat put in the position one. And Dennis, what about you? What's the position of the handle? Zero. Is that the upper position? Yes, it shows zero. I copy. Alex, to start with, could you put it in position one? And you can turn off the STR. Okay, so we'll be saving the resources. So the STR is off. And which position did you say? Dennis. Oleg, for you, it's position one. And for Dennis, uh, don't do anything with it. Just hold off. So how do you feel about the heat consumption? Is it a little chilly for you? No, it's very comfortable. All right, that's excellent. That's all for right now. Dennis, you can prepare the safety tether. That safety tether can be attached to a soft handrail ring on one side, and the other end should be attached to the MLM handrail. Handrail. Will do. I think that's it. Did you remove the camera, or is it inside the bag? Do you have tethers with other hooks? Uh, look for the one in the crew bag, because the tether with hooks uh, will need to be brought inside later. All right, let me just get another one. Well, is your camera on? So we can take that. Dennis, the one that you've taken from the crew log bag, what's the most important is that it will work? Are you trying, Oleg, to take it down with the range 220? I've actually moved it already. Also, it, it did happen, yes. I just need to keep rotating it. Oh, let's secure it in place first. Yes, it's been secured. But now, where shall I secure it? Onto the handrail? Yes. What is that? Is that normal? Is that to be expected? Or will it not? separate or will it stay? You can take the other side of the hook of the same tether to the MLM. All right, let me do that. Let me stretch it out. And for right now, you can use a wire tie and take the MLA cover that you've removed from the ring. It will do. Just you don't need to turn down the ring to the very end. So shall we keep it? Here? Yes. You should take the MLA cover that you have previously removed from the ring and Put it on the wire tie. Okay, just hold it for right now. I'll take the wrench. Holding. All right. Where is your cover? 
right here. Hold it, hold it. We should take some spare batteries uh, for the EVAs. It's a good lesson. Otherwise, we'll be working on the injector. All right. It is uh, secured with a wire tie, the soft MLI. And let me take another hook on this end. All right. You have this tether, and where is it attached to? For the time being, it's going down. Words. So will the ring be staying uh, close by on the handrail? Yes. That is correct. All right, then. It's done, and we are removing it. So how many safety tethers do you have? Let me see two. One on the camera and one for the bundle and... Then that we copy. Then remove the ring. I try to put the ring back on and do two turns. Dennis, so I'm going to unhook yours. The two cosmonauts are uh, continuing to work on uh, the removal of thermal insulation and uh, the removal of a launch right. restraint mechanism from uh, end effector number two on the European robotic arm, one of two identical hands or end effectors on opposite ends of the 36-foot-long arm that is attached to the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module. We're at the uh, one hour, 30 minute mark into the spacewalk for today, planned for about six hours and 45 minutes. The major objective is the uh, continuing outfitting of the European robotic arm with the installation of cameras, the testing of a torque mechanism on both of the two end effectors of that arm, and uh, the relocation of an external control panel on the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module to which the arm is affixed. Uh, transportation tether, so it's closer to the MLM shell. We'll do it. Let's see. Sergey. Now we need to use the valve or the flap. Yes, and then you need to, exactly, you need to close the MLI on this side, closer to the edge. Yes, I've got something like this. It's pretty narrow. Is that it? Yes, but it has not been secured yet. All right. Uh, let me secure it in place first. It's possible. On your spacesuit, you will have a message saying that your voltage is low. So right, once it falls below 25, you get a message generated. Yours should be 25.2. No, it shows 25.8. All right, Oleg. In that case, please press on. On this side, then? From this side? Yes. So I am disconnecting the connect on this side. So give me this fabric, this uh, flap. It's interesting, isn't it? Oh, I guess we should have turned it to the opposite side, but the helmets are on this side. But do we have Velcro on the other side? The uh, camera numbers for the helmet cameras uh, that we offered earlier actually are reversed for the cosmonauts. This is the view from Denis Matveyev as uh, he works uh, at uh, one of the two uh, elbow areas of the uh, European robotic arm, along with Oleg Artemiev, the Expedition 67 commander. 
even in case we need to adjust. So the ring has been removed, the MLI flap is down. So what do we do next? We copy all Oleg. So the ring has been secured. Could you please uh, secure it with the help of the wire ties uh, to the nearby handrail? So we could uh, clearly leave the ring there for some time. What else do we need to do? The start ring, the one that you've taken down, we can put it on the equipment tether closer to the MLM. So we want to make sure they have two points to secure them. You should have time. Okay, now I understand the requirement. Thank you, Oleg. And Dennis, you can translate to handrail 4114, uh, where you were observing uh, the translation of the manipulator. Will do. Let me just hook and unhook. I'm not holding to anything. That's the end. Thank you. So the ring has been secured with the wire tie. Oleg, that sounds great. Thank you so much. So let's uh, translate to handrail 4114. And we are monitoring your progress. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, the two cosmonauts are back uh, on the timeline, having made up uh, for lost time at the beginning of the spacewalk that began a few minutes behind schedule. Now one hour, 36 minutes into the uh, spacewalk. At the bottom uh, of the screen, basically, is Oleg Artemiev uh, wearing the Orlan suit with the red stripes. At the top of your screen, Denise Matveyev, his spacewalking partner in the Orlan suit with the blue stripes. They have installed one of two cameras uh, on the elbow areas of the uh, European robotic arm and have removed uh, thermal insulation and a launch restraint from one of the two end effectors or hands at opposite ends of the arm. Now they'll wait uh, for Sergei Korsakov inside the Russian segment of the station to maneuver the arm into the right configuration and uh, orientation to enable them to install the second of the two elbow cameras uh, called camera light unit number three on uh, the European robotic arm. Oleg, ERA is nominal. That is excellent. Good news. Oleg, we're taking a break. And Oleg, what is the voltage for the suit? 25.6. Transitioning uh, now for a moment uh, to a wider view of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module, the uh, extended uh, European robotic arm in the foreground, and uh, above it, the two cosmonauts who are working uh, to retrieve equipment for the installation of the second of the two camera light unit elbow cameras that will provide uh, good visual cues uh, in the future for spacewalking tasks outside of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module.
Денис, можно я еще разочек тебя спрошу? Денис, can I ask one more time? Два слова страховочных, правильно? Uh, we have two safety tethers uh, on the bundle, is that correct? Uh, let me double check, but that's um, what I believe. You just got in between them, that's why you only see one on each side. But there are actually two tethers. Um, they just wrap A good view from Oleg Artemyev's helmet camera as the International Space Station flies 260 statute miles above the North Atlantic about to begin a uh, northwest to southeasterly trajectory that will carry uh, the International Space Station and its uh, crew members across the northwest coast of Africa. Well, it's kind of uh, easier to carry around because uh, it doesn't uh, flail around as you walk. Yeah, just double hook it and that looks good. That's a good config. Ключ, который Ера 4, которым мы протягивали камеру, он у нас на поршне второй камеры, правильно? And the uh, the safety tether is a, a, attached to, or the equipment tether is attached to um, the camera. So when we change out uh, and install the new camera, what are we going to do with it? We're going to uh, put it back inside um, the crew log bag. Uh, because we might need it um, when we start working um, with um, other equipment, the, uh, namely the um, uh, R and R of the gla glass caps, protective glass caps. Okay. Uh, here it is. I think um, that's the ratchet wrench. Alec? Alec? Um, can you check your uh, primary pump um, uh, power switch and see if it's on or not? It's off because um, I'm cons conserving electricity. Copy. But make sure you don't uh, overheat. Um, so far, so good. I, I don't feel uncomfortable, um, especially because um, 
of the low voltage. Yeah. Um, we usually get a message voltage low at 25 volts. Uh, however, that's very conservative. We still have a lot of margin. Oh, that makes sense. Олег, ты меня спросил, я не разобрал. Да. да. Какой самый большой потребитель в скафандре? So, um, what's um, the biggest power consuming a component of the Orlan suit? I would probably guess it's the fan. Um, the fans are installed in parallel, so they're uh, pretty much uh, drawing um, equal power. Yeah, but for some reason it just rose to 25 decimal 7. Okay, guys. Um, Sergei is starting to uh, move the arm, so please um, keep your eyes on uh, the arm motion. Okay?
How are we doing on the timeline, Sergey? Олег, повтори еще раз, пожалуйста. How are we doing on the timeline? Олег, еще раз не разборчиво. Олег. Нет, мы пока идем. Идем на 15 минут с опережением. Uh, right now we're about 15 minutes ahead of uh, the timeline. Well, that's not bad. This is Mission Control Houston, one hour, 51 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. The view uh, from Oleg uh, Artemyev's helmet camera, looking at uh, Denis Matveyev as the two work through the next task of today's spacewalk, the 252nd in support of assembly maintenance and upgrades of the International Space Station. The uh, next uh, item on the docket is uh, the installation of the second of two camera light unit uh, elbow cameras for the European robotic arm. The first of those two cameras installed as the first task right off the bat today, followed by uh, the removal of thermal insulation and a launch restraint ring from one of the two end effectors or hands on the European robotic arm. Олег, Денис, сейчас будет включаться лазер на манипуляторе, на камерах. Не смотрите в сторону камер манипулятора. Денис и Олег, здесь warning for you. We're about to turn on the laser on the cameras. So please look away uh, from the arm and uh, the arm cameras. Copy. Олег, Денис, начинаем перемещение в зону установки камеры КЛУ-3. Олег, let's start translating uh, to the next uh, work site, where you will be um, installing
Can you hold this for me? While I move to the other side. Okay. Which handrail are we going to? The camera. Did you say camera? So you are in the uh, area where the camera needs to be installed? Yes, um, we're trying to assume the working position. Okay, go ahead and uh, open the uh, MLI flap, Oleg, um, under which uh, the connector is located. And um, Dennis, in the meantime, you can uh, start removing the covers from the uh, cameras you brought with you. What about your four? Uh, how about we um, work with the cameras first, fix Finish those, and, and then we'll deal with uh, other things later. Okay. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours into uh, today's spacewalk. Artemiev and Matveyev uh, continue to work uh, very efficiently in the process of installing the second of two elbow cameras for camera and light units on the 36-foot-long European robotic arm that's on the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. The uh, spacewalk uh, got underway at uh, 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time, a few minutes behind the timeline, but the crew has made up for lost time and is running uh, slightly ahead of the uh, phased elapsed time, the uh, duration of the spacewalk as we speak. This is the seventh spacewalk in Oleg Artemiev's career, the third for Matveyev, the uh, fourth uh, spacewalk for Expedition 67, and the seventh spacewalk conducted out of the International Space Station this year. Okay, then I definitely need um, a heavy artillery here. I'm, I'm going to use a range. Okay. 
No. Make sure you oriented um, in the direction of the handrail. Yeah, but um, I need to rotate my body 180 degrees so that m my feet are end up where my, my head is right now. And you have the camera with you? Um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm holding it in my hands. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm in possession of it. Um, do you have a good a grapple on it? Uh, I do. Excellent. I like just a reminder, um, two, four, and five. Yes, I remember. Number two is uh, Titan. Copy, Oleg. I, I'd like to look into the eyes of the person who actually manufactured and uh, made these bolts. Um, would you say it was a good person or not? Uh, no, he's mine, Dennis. That guy is definitely mine. Well, I got one. Okay, now I need um, to have the wing nut. And um, set the range for tightening. Um, what are you doing right now, guys? Um, we are um, working with the Strella now. Oh, wait. I'll like three minutes to eclipse. Uh, 
Okay. I don't know if it's good or bad. Okay, three bolts are in. And now we're going to be making the connections. Uh, we copy and concur. Uh, you're go to make the connectors. Okay, let me hold this hold it with your hands Indi indicator is moving it is moved by about one quarter Indicator is at half. I have a message, voltage low. Okay, this is done. Do I have to pass it through here? Alex. Alex. Yes. On the display, what is the value of the voltage? You mentioned voltage is low message flashed. The value is 24.8. Copy. This is after a pump has been turned on. Yes, we see the voltage fluctuation as you turn on and off that pump. Okay, so now we remove cover and then we do the handle. Did you complete the tightening until full stop? Affirmative. The cover must be installed from the connector side. It goes on your side. The cover is off. When glass panes are clear. Okay, so now we have to use the tools and in the meantime, I will close the MLI. MLI is closed. Okay. 
Let's remove this one. Okay, this is to open. Alex, you need to go back towards MRM2. What happened? Alex, can you translate across the arm? And what do I do after this? Then you have to go to the airlock. Okay, let me help you. Alex, you are going back to the airlock. Denise, please assist Oleg as he translates across the arm. Okay, let us clean up at the work site. Uh, finish with the camera and then we'll start translating. Okay, where do I put the tool? Put it in the crew lock bag. Alec, please remove the crew lock bag and hand it over to Denise. Alec, please, do not worry. Everything is fine. You are okay. Oh, me, worry? No way. Okay, here's the tool. Yeah, the handle goes in there, too. Okay. Let me turn it around. Let's use one hook for both. Okay, the handle goes here. Well, guess what? It does not fit. What are we going to do? Okay, let's do it like this. Right here. Alec, Denis, if you are not able to stow handrails in the crew lock bag, leave them temp stowed and let Oleg start his translation. Okay, give us a couple, couple of minutes. Okay, you got two minutes. Alec. Alec. Go ahead. What's the value? of the voltage on the display, 23.7. Alec, you must return to the airlock as soon as possible, because if you lose power, it is not only the pump and the fan, you will lose comb. So you have to go back. I understand. Alec, drop everything and go back. 
Олег, ты идешь по СТУ, а Денис пойдет по Ирам. Олег, ты будешь Денис will translate via lanyards. And when you are back in the airlock, you will connect the service umbilical and switch to station power. So uh, this is a heads up for you so that you don't wait for the EV hatch to close. Okay, uh, maybe it's not a good idea to hand the crew look back to you, Denise, because it's a little tangled. Oleg, we will take care of this with Denise. Your objective is to go back as soon as possible. Okay, I will. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 17 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev uh, reporting a slight fluctuation in the voltage on his Orlan spacesuit. Russian flight controllers directed him to return to the Poisk airlock. Denis Matveyev is uh, still outside uh, conducting uh, work in the installation of the second of two camera light unit uh, elbow cameras on the European robotic arm and will be uh, standing by for further word from the Russian flight controllers on whether or not this uh, voltage fluctuation uh, has any impact on the rest of today's spacewalk. The U.S. lights will continue operating. Yes, affirmative. Okay, Denis, you detached your tethers here. Is everything okay? Yes, everything is fine. Okay, so now I have to jump across the arm. So here's what we do. I am going to skip over and you will un undo my hook. Oleg, this is Solovyov. Drop everything and start going back right away. Yes, yes. How copy? Copy. So, Oleg, go back and connect to station power. Yes, I copy. Vladimir Alexeyevich, I copy and understand. Immediate return to airlock. Yes, and connect to station power. Affirmative connect to station power. Okay, Alec, please start going back. Yes, in work. I'm already putting my legs across the arm. Okay, grab this. Okay, got it. Denis, you going to be okay without this ring? This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 20 minutes into the spacewalk. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, Oleg Artemiev, the Expedition 67 commander, working outside with Denis Matveyev on the installation of the second of two camera light unit elbow cameras on the European robotic arm, uh, noted uh, an unexpected uh, fluctuation in the battery power in his Russian Orlan spacesuit. And he was directed by Russian flight controllers to return to the Poisk airlock to be put back on uh, internal power from the International Space Station. The uh, Russian flight controllers are assessing uh, whether or not uh, this will impact the spacewalk. Artemiev is in no danger whatsoever. He's uh, very close to the Poisk airlock and will be uh, re-entering the airlock momentarily. The uh, two spacewalkers uh, began their spacewalk today at 8.53 a.m. Central Time, 9.53 a.m. Eastern Time. By opening uh, the hatch to Poisk and uh, had completed 
the uh, installation of uh, two elbow cameras for the um, European robotic arm and the uh, removal of thermal insulation and a launch restraint ring from one of the two end effectors or hands on the European arm. The uh, tasks uh, in front of uh, the two cosmonauts for the rest of the day included uh, the relocation and connection of an external control panel from one uh, base point to another on the uh, Naoka multipurpose laboratory module, the testing of a torque rigidizing mechanism on the two end effector hands on the arm and uh, some other maintenance tasks and outfitting work for the European robotic arm. Are tethered to your Orlan, correct? Affirmative, one on the short tether and the other is on the attachable tether. Okay, now let us move a little bit away from this side and secure the camera bundle on handrail 4105. We don't need this bundle anymore because, since it's empty. Oleg, if we lose COM unexpectedly, select the use of injector if the fan goes off. Okay, will do. Denise, update on the handrail number. Use four one zero seven to secure the camera bundle. Okay, copy. Oleg, we lost the image inaudible. Please provide voice commentary. Okay, I'm finalizing the camera bundle on the handrail. Denis, Oleg, please provide detailed voice commentary. This is Oleg. I have stepped off the Strela. I'm at the EV hatch. I'm ready to ingress. Ingress the airlock and connect to the station power. Copy ingressing. Battery voltage 23.6. We copy, Oleg. 
Напоминаю, значит, Олег, a reminder. Once you connect to station power, activate ST1 power. Pump will continue operating. Switch to station power. Sublimator will continue operating. We will do the drying to once Denise is back in the airlock. I think we need some solar panels on the Orlans so we can recharge during the EVA. Inaudible. Denise, I am on handrail 4107, moving zero, zero, zero 006, moving on to 4107. Okay, secure the bundle as close to the handrail as possible. After this is done, take a break, catch some rest. Okay, we'll do. Okay, am I closing the hatch? Inaudible. Okay, I will swap the battery and be back. So, should I remove the protective ring? Sergey. I secured the bundle without slack as much as possible. This is Mission Control Houston, almost two and a half hours into uh, today's spacewalk, Oleg Artemiev. The Expedition 67 commander back inside the Poisk airlock, back on International Space Station power, following an unexpected uh, fluctuation in the voltage, the battery voltage on his Orlon spacesuit. Denise Matveyev uh, is uh, approaching the airlock itself. We're waiting for further word from the Russian flight control team on uh, how we will be proceeding today. Mat uh, Matveyev uh, and Artemiev were in the process of wrapping up the installation of the second of two camera light unit uh, elbow cameras on the European robotic arm when this uh, unexpected uh, drop in voltage was uh, detected. Artemiev is not in any danger. He's back inside the safety of the airlock, uh, back on International Space Station power. Are you on station power. In progress. So, are you still uh, trying to connect, or you're complete with connecting the umbilical? I have connected the electrical umbilical. What do we do next? Alex. One. One, two, three, one, two, three. Alec. Yes, Gena. Once electrical umbilical is connected, turn on Orlan 1 power on EVA support panel. We're not going to connect the cooling umbilical because the sublimator is still operating.
Okay, Orlan 1, power is on on the panel. Yeah. Turning off yeah. the load and transitioning to station power. Gina, uh, after I got I connected to the electrical umbilical, the voltage dropped to 20. We still see 23.2. Okay, then there was some sort of noise and it jumped to 26. Now it's 25.9. Your power switch is in auto. Affirmative. That's a mystery. I agree. It's as if something has nudged it and it started showing nominal values. Okay. Still, switch to station power. Shut down pumps and fan. Power switch to station and back. I'm on station power. Copy. Ну, в общем, регулируй себе тепловое состояние и пока. Okay, so now adjust your thermal control. And then This is Mission Control Houston. You're looking uh, at a view uh, from the helmet camera of Oleg Artemiev inside the Poisk airlock. He was uh, directed to return to the airlock and place his suit on internal ISS power after uh, experiencing a, uh, an unexpected uh, fluctuation in uh, battery power for his Orlon suit about 20 minutes ago. Artemiev is uh, in the safety of the airlock, never was in any danger. Denis Matveyev uh, remains uh, just outside of the airlock, waiting for further direction from the Russian mission control team in Korolyov as to how we may be proceeding with today's spacewalk. I should be able to translate by the arm. Inaudible. Okay, I am translating to 
So electrical power is completely connected. Right, and I'm on 14.06 now, 14.07. Just uh, take your time to get to the area. All right. Unintelligible. All right. Rest for now. I'm not tired. To make sure that take the tether with me, 25 meters. I am at 4114. So rest for now. Okay, I will. This is Mission Control Houston. Just to recap, Oleg Artemia, the Expedition 67 commander, is inside uh, the Poisk airlock on internal International Space Station battery power, having been uh, directed to return to the airlock about uh, 30 minutes ago. Following an unexpected fluctuation in the battery power, the voltage readings on his Orlon spacesuit, Artemiev uh, was never in any danger made uh, his way back into the airlock. Denise Matveyev is in the vicinity of the airlock itself. 
as the two cosmonauts await further direction from the flight control team in Korolyov, outside Moscow at the Russian Mission Control Center, as to uh, how we intend to proceed with today's spacewalk. The two cosmonauts had uh, completed the installation of two uh, cameras on the elbow areas of the uh, European robotic arm and had uh, removed thermal insulation and uh, a launch restraint from one of the two end effectors or hands of the arm at the time the voltage uh, fluctuation was detected. In one minute, we have sunrise. All right.
Олег, скажи, пожалуйста, ты Олег, выключи. Олег, how about haircut camera? Is it off? No, it's on. Uh, do I need to turn it off? Yes, please. Иркут can be kept on. So which one am I turning off? So this one, I think. It's off. Copy, Alec. Dennis, how are you doing there? I'm good. Are you getting cold? I'm all right. Say it again. Inaudible. This is Mission Control Houston, two hours, 50 minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. Oleg Artemiev inside uh, the Poisk airlock on International Space Station power for his Orlon spacesuit. It was uh, about uh, 40 minutes ago that uh, he detected a uh, drop in battery power for the suit, a voltage fluctuation. Russian flight controllers uh, directed him to return to the Poisk airlock. Artemiev was uh, very close to the airlock, never in any danger. Denis Matveyev, his uh, spacewalking colleague, uh, remains just outside of the airlock. The Russian flight controllers are uh, placing the European robotic arm in a safe configuration while we uh, are standing by for a further word from the Russian flight control team on uh, whether or not today's spacewalk will be terminated early or not. It would appear as if uh, Artemiev's suit uh, may be uh, in a uh, configuration right now that would not permit uh, the continuation of the spacewalk, but we're waiting for official confirmation of that.
Если хочешь, у тебя сейчас есть время, можешь пофотографировать. If you want, Денис, if you have time now, you can take some pictures. Хорошо, good. This is Mission Control Houston. Just to recap, uh, Oleg Artemiev back inside the Poisk airlock on International Space Station power for his Orlon spacesuit that experienced an unexpected fluctuation in voltage, uh, basically a drop in battery power uh, about 50 minutes ago. Denise uh, Matveyev uh, is still outside of the airlock itself as uh, the Russian flight controllers are working uh, to uh, position the European robotic arm in a safe configuration before uh, determining uh, the next step in uh, how we may uh, proceed uh, with the rest of today's spacewalk, which is approaching the three-hour mark. The two cosmonauts had completed uh, the installation of a pair of cameras for the camera and light units on the uh, elbow areas of the uh, European robotic arm. They had other work to do with the arm, including uh, the relocation of an external control panel. All of that work uh, momentarily uh, on hold, pending uh, official word from the Russian flight control team as to how we intend to proceed uh, once uh, the European robotic arm is configured in the right uh, and safe uh, orientation. At the time uh, that the voltage of drop uh, was noted uh, by Artemiev, uh, he was very close to the Poisk airlock, never in any danger. And uh, the Russian flight controllers uh, moved uh, in uh, an orderly fashion to direct him back into the airlock and to place his suit on space station power. Dennis, there's a laser up with the arm at this time, so don't look towards the arm. I copy.
This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, seven minutes into uh, today's spacewalk. A view of the Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module with uh, Denise Matveyev, uh, the Russian cosmonaut, at the top of your screen, working uh, in tandem with uh, cosmonaut Sergei Korsakov, who is inside the Russian segment of the station as they are configuring uh, the European robotic arm that you see extended in the foreground. Matveyev and Oleg Artemyev uh, had been working on a variety of tasks in the continuing outfitting of uh, the European robotic arm this morning during this spacewalk, the 252nd in support of station assembly maintenance and upgrades. Two uh, cameras uh, for the camera light units on the elbow area of the uh, European robotic arm have been installed during today's spacewalk along with the removal of a launch restraint and some thermal insulation from one of the two end effectors or hands of the uh, robotic arm itself. Almost an hour ago, Artemyev reported a uh, unexpected drop in battery voltage on his Orlon spacesuit. He was directed by the Russian flight controllers to return to the Poisk airlock he is inside Poisk, uh, hooked up uh, to uh, space station power for his suit, while Matveyev uh, does a few cleanup tasks outside. The two cosmonauts awaiting formal and further direction from the Russian flight control team on how today's activities will proceed. So the boom has started moving. Copy. I'm not looking at it. Or shall I look?
Олег, у нас э, сейчас нет картинки. Олег, мы не получаем видео от вашей камеры, so just verbally, if you can give us a status update on how you feel, what's going on. Excellent. Just even better than at the start of the EVA. I'm energized, I had a good nap, I had a good rest. That's good. Oleg, thank you. So what are our plans? The manipulator, um, the arm, will go to the base point. And after that, Dennis uh, will translate to the airlock. What about the rings? What about removing the rings? No, we will not be removing them anymore. Not this time. Well, at least maybe we should have taken the cargo boom and... and uh, no, Oleg. Uh, the management gave us clear direction to go to the airlock, and that's what we're going to do. I understand. All right. This is Mission Control Houston, three hours, 14 minutes into today's spacewalk. We will be activating lasers on the cameras of the manipulator. Please do not look at the manipulator, at the arm. Copy all, will not look and copy. It has been uh, almost an hour since uh, Oleg Artemiev, the Expedition 67 commander, noted a uh, drop in battery voltage for his Orlon spacesuit. He was directed by the Russian flight control team to return to the Poisk airlock. In the interim, uh, the Russian flight controllers have been assessing uh, the systems and the configuration of the European robotic arm that Artemiev and Denis Matveyev had been working on in the continuing outfitting of the European robotic arm. The uh, crew was just informed that uh, once the arm is uh, placed into the uh, proper configuration, it is in the process, as you see, of being maneuvered uh, to uh, the correct uh, orientation for the completion of today's spacewalk. So we uh, now uh, will be terminating today's spacewalk early. Denise Matveyev uh, will uh, return to the airlock to join Artemiev, who is uh, on uh, station power hooked up to an umbilical inside the Poisk airlock. He was never in any danger uh, during uh, the period in which uh, he detected uh, the drop in voltage for his Orlon spacesuit, uh, made his way back in, into the airlock fairly rapidly. And uh, Matveyev uh, continued outside uh, working on a few uh, cleanup tasks, but uh, the crew now has been told that uh, today's spacewalk will end uh, early We'll be uh, waiting for Matveyev to return to the airlock and for the hatch to be closed to mark the official end of today's excursion.
So is the translation towards the airlock? So just start the translation slowly. There is no reason to hurry. Take your time. And then the, the, you, when you cross um, the camera bundles, just take them with you. Don't be in a hurry. We have plenty of time. Just move along. Uh, you are translating by yourself. Therefore, verify uh, the connection, the tethers, and um, just take your time. Do not be in a hurry. To recap, uh, today's uh, spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev uh, is being ended uh, earlier than had been planned. The uh, decision by the Russian flight controllers uh, to uh, complete the spacewalk ahead of schedule uh, made uh, in the wake of a drop in battery voltage for Artemiev's spacesuit that occurred about an hour ago. The uh, drop in voltage noted at about the two hour, 17 minute mark into the spacewalk. We're now at three hours, 19 minutes into the spacewalk. Denise Matveyev still outside, as you can see in this view, the European robotic arm in the process of being maneuvered into uh, its stowed configuration for the remainder of the day. The two cosmonauts had completed the installation of camera and light unit elbow cameras on the arm and had removed uh, a launch restraint and some thermal insulation from one of the two end effector hands uh, that uh, are at uh, both ends of the 36 foot long European robotic arm. That's when uh, the uh, voltage drop was detected. Artemiev was directed uh, to go back into the Poisk airlock. He placed his suit on ISS power at that time. Never was any, in any danger. Matveyev uh, remained outside uh, to complete uh, some of the cleanup work associated with the uh, tasks that he and Artemiev had completed up to that point. The most important, Dennis, is that you take your time, do not be in a hurry, secure the bundle in such a way that it's not interfering with your translation, and then you'll continue on with moving back to the airlocks. Just take your time. And have you secured the bundle? We copy and we are getting the video from your suit.
Сейчас оно у балки стрелы, поэтому... СТО из Эдди. Cargo boom. Uh, when you come closer to the arm, just pay attention to the bundle as well, just to make sure it's not in the way. And then uh, using the lanyard of the strela, then start moving. It's convenient, it's easy, using the lanyard, take your time. All right, I'm just looking to see how to orient myself better. And if you're getting tired, don't hesitate to take a pause, rest, and then continue translation. Will do. I am on Strela. We copy, Denis. This is Mission Control Houston, a look at the uh, Naoka Multipurpose Laboratory module. Uh, at the top of your screen is the European robotic arm that is uh, in the final stages of being placed in a stowed configuration with uh, today's spacewalk by uh, Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev being called to an early end due to a voltage drop in Artemiev's spacesuit that occurred a little over an hour ago. Artemiev was never in any danger. He was directed by Russian flight controllers to return to the Poisk airlock where he placed his suit on umbilicals to receive power from the International Space Station while Matveyev uh, completed uh, some cleanup work outside and the arm was being maneuvered by Sergei Korsakov, the Russian cosmonaut inside the Russian segment of the station into a stowed configuration. Let me check. So, Two caddies here, we copy. And small, small red on glisser. Hook is there, yes, I confirm. Small, small red. I got it. Small, small red uh, with the ratchet range. Yes, I've got it. 
Small, small red. Small, small red. Uh, for the equipment and tools during the EDA, I've got it. Small, red. Small, small red. Got it. We copy Oleg. That's excellent. The uh, two cosmonauts working uh, with the Russian flight controllers at the Russian Mission Control Center in uh, taking inventory of their equipment before Matveyev uh, returns inside the Poisk airlock to join Artemiev, who has been inside for the better part of the past hour on uh, International Space Station power following uh, the unexpected uh, fluctuation in battery voltage for his Orlon spacesuit that has resulted in an early end to today's spacewalk. And now the actual uh, elapsed time of the spacewalk will uh, come to an end with the clock stopping at the time that the hatch is closed to Poisk. That will be coming up before long. So just keep turning. I am. That's good. Excellent. So you got through. That's great. Look at the, the camera, just be careful. Yes, I know, I know. You know, the start was so excellent. Yes, and you have uh, just a little bit to translate towards the lower part. I copy. All right. So, I guess I need to now start moving towards you. Yes, you need to turn towards the left arm. Now, I'm just consulting with you what's the best way to do, from the top or from the bottom? Well, try to go towards the legs. No, guys, it's better to do from the top because you, st you have a bundle as well and there's a lot of equipment. So I, I can tell you. Okay, do it. Assist me verbally. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now secure yourself to the ring. So what's that side? Yes. Yes, you were able to move through. Yes, the bundles, of course. That's another factor to consider. I think if you keep moving with your feet like this, I am, and the bundle just went up, forward. Do you think I'll be able to squeeze by? You could. Dennis, let's Try not to squeeze in there. All right, copy. Okay, if they're saying it's not desirable, let's not do it. Okay, let's just continue this way then.
So shall I move up? Yes, uh, that's the best place. Then you'll give me the hook or the bundle, whatever is more convenient for you, the bundle or the hook. Either way. All right. And we'll have the orbital night. Uh -huh. Soon. Uh -huh. All right, that's good. Uh -huh. Just like that. Uh -huh. Excellent. Super. I know I didn't catch you. Now I caught the bundle. All right. And I'll hand it to you and then some kind of a hook. Oh, give me your hook then. Dennis, do not go inside yet. Give Oleg the bundle. All right, give it to me. I'm ready. All right, I'm holding it like that and then I'm securing it in place. Will you be able to take it from your side? Yes, I will. Okay, I'm holding it. Stand by. Wait. Okay, I've got it. That's it. Dennis, you are at the airlock. Now, let me kind of dive under. All right, let me figure out where to move, where to translate. That's good. Let me move this way. Stop, stop. Excellent. Very good. And Olga, we didn't need to have it. It's too bad. But of course it's too bad. But things happen. All right. And then the second one. Please wait, wait, give me just a sec. All right, I'm moving in this way, just like that. And then the camera itself, hand it to me. One kit is inside the airlock. Okay, hand me the rubber band. Okay, now give me the next one. Uh -huh. Yes, like this. Okay. Okay, there you go. Okay, got a hook on. It feels empty. Did we forget something? Oh. I removed the tether, but there was nothing else. Yeah, this is a light version of the kit. Here's the second hook. Hey, hold on. Okay, now... Good, good, good. Well, looks like we will have to do an audit. Alec, Denis, confirm kids are inside. Affirmative. 
Copy. Олег, we are going into eclipse. Before that happens, check Dennis's suit for contamination. Looks clean. This is Mission Control Houston. Denise Matveyev is uh, now back at the uh, Poisk airlock, uh, preparing uh, to join Oleg Artemiev inside, uh, following uh, the collection of all of their tools, tethers, and other equipment associated with today's spacewalk, which is at the three hour, 39 minute mark. About an hour and 20 minutes or so ago, the uh, spacewalk ran into a uh, snag when Artemiev uh, noted okay, an unexpected okay. uh, drop in battery voltage on his suit. Denise Matveyev's suit has encountered no issues during today's spacewalk. With the uh, unexpected drop in voltage, Artemiev was directed back into the Poisk airlock. He was never in any danger. He uh, placed his suit on uh, International Space Station Systems Power inside Poisk, where he has been uh, hanging out for the past hour and 20 minutes or so. The uh, two cosmonauts, uh, before the uh, decision was made to terminate the spacewalk early, had completed uh, the installation of uh, cameras for the camera and light units on the elbow area of the uh, European robotic arm and had removed insulation and a launch restraint from uh, one of the two end effectors or hands on the European robotic arm, but that's as far as they went when uh, the Russian flight control team uh, stopped further work during today's spacewalk, directed Artemiev to return uh, to the Poisk airlock and then uh, began work to uh, place uh, the European robotic arm in a stowed configuration where it uh, is now, allowing uh, Matveyev to rejoin Artemiev in the Poisk airlock. As soon as the hatch is closed, that will mark the official end in terms of elapsed time for today's spacewalk. And there's a good view as uh, the International Space Station passes uh, just to the south of the continent of Africa at an altitude of 260 miles. Matveyev just outside of the airlock hatch to Poisk on the space-facing side of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Is the hook is holding it. Denis, Alec, we are not getting the video at this point. Please provide voice commentary. Okay. Okay, I'm freeing up space for Denise. Okay, hand me that short hook. Yes, this one. Okay. There you go. Let me hook it up. Now the second one. Okay, got bo both hooks on. Okay, let me take that kit.
Okay. Pressing. Yes, like this. Keep it going, keep going. Excellent. Yes. Right there. Bend your legs. Little more. Bend, bend a little more. And spin. I think the legs are interfering. Okay, Denise is inside. So, what do we have here? I think it was the configured. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, Denise Matveyev now back inside the Poisk airlock, joining Oleg Artemiev at the three hour, 44 minute mark into today's spacewalk, a spacewalk that is ending prematurely due to a uh, battery voltage drop that was detected in Artemiev's Orlon spacesuit. Uh, about an hour and a half ago. Once uh, the two cosmonauts uh, prepare uh, the airlock for repressurization, uh, they'll take another uh, check of their tools and tethers, place their suits on, uh, well, Artemiev is already on International Space Station power. Uh, Matveyev will place his suit on ISS power as well before they close the hatch to mark the official end of today's spacewalk in terms of elapsed time. And then uh, they'll set out to repressurize the airlock. Artemiev uh, at about the uh, two hour, 17 minute mark into the spacewalk reported an unexpected drop in battery voltage for his Orlon spacesuit. He was directed by the Russian flight control team to return to the Poisk airlock where he placed his suit on ISS power. He's been hanging out uh, since then while Matveyev cleaned up uh, the work site around uh, the Naoka multipurpose laboratory module and the European robotic arm that the two cosmonauts have been working on uh, earlier today to uh, install uh, cameras on the elbow area of the arm for the camera light units, two of them. They were installed as uh, well as the removal of insulation and some launch restraints from one of the two end effectors or hands of the European robotic arm. That's when uh, Artemiev's suit uh, you can was noted uh, to have uh, a drop in voltage, and that uh, is what uh, altered uh, the plans for the two cosmonauts for the rest of today's activities. Steps, removing the protective rings, etc. Understand. Denis, are you already in the airlock? I am inside. Drying has started. Yes, Denise has been in the airlock for a while now. Okay, then please start installing the protective ring. Okay, the drying is in progress. Starting with the protective ring. Please put heat, heat cold switch to the middle position. Copy position three. Okay, protective ring is off, folded and stowed. Oleg, Denis, please activate the air kit camera. Okay, so this one? Yes, this one. Mine is off. 
We don't have LED LEDs illuminated. Okay, please make sure both cameras are off. Both cameras are off. Copy. Do you want me to push for you? Yes, like that, under it, uh, around the handrail. Excellent. Talking over each other. Okay. Checking the rubber bands. Oleg, did you inspect the rubber seal on the EV hatch? Yes, we have, and we will take another look, just in case. Yes, please do. Once again, uh, at the three-hour, 51-minute mark, uh, Artemiev and Matveyev are back inside the Poisk airlock. They're uh, taking one more look around uh, to make sure they have all their equipment before they close the hatch to mark the official end of today's spacewalk. We'll uh, wait for the official hatch closure time from the Russian flight control team in Koryov before we uh, provide statistics on today's spacewalk and the cumulative statistics for Artemiev and Matveyev. Again, their spacewalk terminated early today because of a voltage drop in battery power for Artemiev's spacesuit that occurred uh, about an hour and a half or so ago at uh, around the two hour, 17 minute mark in the spacewalk after uh, Artemiev and Matveyev had uh, just completed the installation of the second of two camera light unit cameras on the elbow areas of the European robotic arm, which has now been stowed in a safe configuration uh, until the next time that uh, a Russian spacewalk is conducted to continue the outfitting of the European arm.
Олег, расскажи там процесс сушки у тебя как идет. Олег, please report the status of drying. Still drying. Left counter is four. Right counter is seven, five, eight, seven, five, eight. And in the Orlan interface unit line, I see zero twenty. Okay, Oleg, your drying is going on per per the schedule, and both temperatures will be changing independently, unlike in Dennis's suit. Right. It's quite cold in that suit. Sh yes, it is quite cold. 18 degrees is pretty low. So you overcooled a little bit in the airlock, and now the temperature is 15 or below. And how long is the time I need that I need to wait out 10 minutes? Yes, 10 minutes. Okay, this means one more minute left. Okay. Drying completed nominally 10 minutes. Copy. You are go to move on. Copy, Oleg, Denis. Go for EV hatch closure. Make sure no tethers are in the way. Loosen the uh, tethers remove the hooks. Okay, and work. Verify no fod in the hatchway. Yes. We are doing the inspection now. Yes, please look closely. What time did we go out? So we spent two hours outside. Sergey, how much time did we spend outside? Three hours, 58 minutes. As of now. Okay, we're putting the tool in. Okay, did you release the tether? Yes. Yes. Guys, you did you check for FOD? Yes, yes. Everything is in place. The loops, screws, no FOD. We copy, Oleg.
Так, ключик в рабочее. Да, сейчас его, погоди, перед этот. Окей. The tool must be in the working config. Okay, move the hatch cover to the flange. This is Mission Control Houston, just passing the four-hour mark into uh, today's spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and Denise Matveyev, both uh, crew members back inside the Poisk airlock following the early uh, end to today's excursion due to a uh, low voltage reading, a sudden uh, drop in battery power for Artemiev's spacesuit that occurred uh, at about the two hour, 17 minute mark into the excursion. Turn the hatch tool until full stop. We are standing by for the closing of the hatch to Poisk that will mark the official end of today's spacewalk uh, with the official elapsed time. We'll be waiting for that number to come from Russian flight controllers outside of Moscow at the Russian Mission Control Center. They uh, directed Artemiev to uh, return to the Poisk airlock after uh, he noted uh, the drop in battery voltage on his Orlon spacesuit. He was never in any danger, uh, moved back inside the airlock, hooked his suit up to International Space Station power, and uh, later was joined by Matveyev after uh, Matveyev uh, collected uh, all the equipment that he and Artemiev had been using for the spacewalk to continue the outfitting of the European robotic arm. Additionally, Sergei Korsakov, the other Russian cosmonaut uh, on the Expedition 67 crew, maneuvered the arm into a stowed configuration uh, prior to the time that Matveyev returned to the airlock to join Artemiev. Is it engaging? Yes. So are you... The hatch is closed. Copy that, Oleg. EVA time is four hours, one minute outside. The hatches are closed. Guys, good job. The main objective, objectives have been achieved. Well, LFM ring still remaining. Okay, tomorrow we will do a debrief at 8 o'clock your time. I am saying goodbye for today, wishing you an easy and safe flight, handing you over to the airlock people. Thank you for your hard work today. Thank you for your excellent support. We'll talk to you soon. Oleg, Denis, this is Dmitry. How do you copy? Loud and clear. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, the official uh, end to today's uh, abbreviated spacewalk. Russian flight controllers confirming uh, the end of the spacewalk at 12.54 p.m. Central Time, 1.54 p.m. Eastern Time bringing uh, the spacewalk to an end at four hours and one minute. We'll uh, be working on uh, aggregate uh, statistics here for the time being while uh, work is underway to uh, begin the repressurization of the Poisk airlock. Artemiev and Medvedev back inside the spacewalk, concluding at 12.54 p.m. Central, 1.54 p.m. Eastern time at four hours and one minute. Right? Affirmative, Q card 10, step 4, MRM 2, repressed to 260. Yes, okay, checking, KSD 2 closed, KSD SO closed. LED not illuminated. 
Okay. The, we already reported hatches, PHO hatches closed. Enabling PHO SU KVD. Complete. Now KVD PHO SU open. Okay. We have confirmation of the KVD open. Okay, now start repressing to 260. Affirmative. And uh, during the next step, report pressure in, in, in the volume and in the suit. Pressure in the compartment point four in the suit point three two. In the compartment, 50, suit, point uh, zero three. Pressure in the compartment, 80, in the suit, 026, 026, copy. One ten in the compartment, point 0.24 and point 0.23 in the suit, respectively, copy. One thirty and point two, point two in both suits. Copy. Then KVD PHO is to close uh, command is expected uh, in MRM two two sixty according to pressure gauge reader one fifty in a compartment point. 16 and point 16 in the suit. Copy. One eighty in the compartment and point twelve and point fourteen in the suit. Copy. Two hundred in the compartment and point one and point one in the suits. Copy. Two twenty in the compartment. Point zero eight and point zero eight in the suit copy. Two forty in the compartment. And point zero six and point zero six in the suit. Copy. Two sixteen number M two. This is Mission Control Houston, uh, the spacewalk by Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denise Matveyev has come to an end with the hatch closing on the Poisk airlock at uh, 12.54 p.m. Central Time, 1.54 p.m. Eastern Time, bringing today's spacewalk to an end at four hours, one minute. This was the 252nd spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance and upgrades. This was the um, seventh spacewalk out of the International Space Station this year and the fourth 
during Expedition 67. Oleg Artemiev uh, now has uh, accrued seven spacewalks in his career for a total of 45 hours, 45 minutes, while Denis Matveyev has three spacewalks in his resume, totaling 18 hours, 20 minutes. The uh, 252 spacewalks in support of station assembly maintenance and upgrades now have uh, totaled 1,594 hours and 50 minutes, which equates to 70 days, nine hours and 50 minutes of spacewalking time. And the four spacewalks uh, during this increment, the Expedition 67 increment, have uh, totaled 25 hours and 25 minutes for the uh, spacewalkers. Today's spacewalk was ended early. Uh, it was ordered uh, to end early by the Russian flight controllers after Oleg Artemiev noticed a uh, unexpected drop in his battery voltage for his Orlon spacesuit. He was never in any danger, was directed back into the Poisk airlock, placed his suit on International Space Station power, while Denis Matveyev uh, continued outside uh, to complete uh, the gathering of tools, tethers, and other equipment that he and Artemiev had been using for the continued outfitting of the European robotic arm. Inside, uh, Sergei Korsakov uh, began the work uh, to maneuver the European robotic arm into a stowed configuration. There will be a few additional cleanup steps involved in uh, making sure the arm is uh, complete in the configuration uh, that will be satisfactory to both European engineers as well as uh, the Russian flight controllers. That work uh, will be continuing over the next couple of hours, but the arm uh, is in a safe configuration, and the two crew members are safely inside the Poisk airlock, the hatch closed, ready to begin the repressurization of the Poisk airlock. While outside, before the uh, battery voltage issue cropped up for Artemiev, he and Matveyev had completed the installation of uh, two camera light unit cameras along the elbow area of the European robotic arm and had removed uh, some thermal insulation and a launch restraint from one of the two end effectors for the 36-foot-long uh, European robotic arm, but they could go no further with today's uh, tasks due uh, to Artemiev being directed back inside the Poisk airlock. Okay, the open valve uh, conversation between crew members. Okay, you'll take yours. Umbilicals in place. Next. Alex, do you have umbilicals connected both? Yes. Uh, tow mode, exchange mode, uh, uh, power on, indicated electrical uh, umbilical to connect to Orland. It's already done on my suit. 
Okay, copy. Question, Alec. MRM two uh, question. What was that shiny object? That is a plastic uh, wrap up. It's really um, under layer from the top. That is uh, uh, clear and uh, shiny, and that's what you saw. And uh, rubber stars, uh, those are uh, Velcro are uh, underlay. Anyway, it didn't say anything useful. Uh, now, uh, two, two. Let's turn on power. Okay, now, release, transmit, switch to board power, and then turn on main power. Okay, first. Okay, we completed stabilization of pressure MRM2. Uh, could you let us know what was... Okay, I'm already out of there, but let me check. Pressure. 261. 261, wait for five minutes. In MRM2, uh, press transmit uh, button. We understand correctly that you disconnected from the load and uh, push the transmit button. Yes, that is done. After checking pressure, we'll do another one in MRM2.
station MRM2 after five minutes. 761. I'm sorry. 261. 261, of course. Okay. After stabilization. What about the hope? 315. Now you can go to your card 12. Inaudible. Alex, five minutes, uh, two, six, one, in MRM, two. Copy. Stable. Now, we'll wait for Sergei to let us know what the whole... And then we'll go to Q card 12. Copy. Pressure. What is it now? Sergey, what is the current pressure? Three one six point five. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, with the repressurization of the Poisk airlock well underway, the two cosmonauts, Oleg Artemiev and uh, Denis Matveyev, safely back inside. Uh, the airlock itself uh, soon uh, fully repressurized, and they'll open the hatch uh, to uh, return inside the International Space Station, bringing today's activities to a close. The uh, spacewalk uh, was ended early at uh, four hours and one minute with the hatch closing to the Poisk airlock at uh, 12.54 p.m. Central Time, 1.54 p.m. Eastern Time. The spacewalk uh, having been cut short uh, because of a low 
uh, voltage reading uh, for the battery for Artemiev's Orlon spacesuit that occurred about two hours and 17 minutes into the spacewalk. At the time that the low uh, voltage reading was detected by Artemiev, he and uh, Matveyev had completed the installation of a pair of cameras for the camera light units on the European robotic arm and had removed uh, some insulation and a launch restraint for one of the two end effectors on the arm, but they could go no further when Artemiev was directed by Russian flight controllers to return to the safety of uh, the airlock. Artemiev was never in any danger. Medvedev uh, hung out outside for a bit longer to collect uh, all the equipment that he and Artemiev had been using during the course of the spacewalk. And uh, once uh, the European robotic arm was maneuvered out of the way by Sergei Korsakov inside the station uh, at uh, the Russian segment control panel for the arm, uh, then uh, Matveyev uh, returned to the airlock and joined Artemiev, and they closed the hatch to complete today's spacewalk at four hours and one minute. So with that, uh, we will wrap up our coverage for today. Again, the Russian spacewalk uh, ending early at four hours and one minute because of a low voltage reading uh, on Artemiev's spacesuit, but both cosmonauts are safely inside. We're never in any danger during the issue uh, that cropped up earlier in the spacewalk today, and uh, they're in the process of wrapping up the repressurization of Poisk. They'll open the hatch to the International Space Station, and they'll be back inside to uh, rejoin uh, the rest of the Expedition 67 crew. With that, uh, we'll complete our coverage for the day. Thanks for joining us throughout the course of the day, and uh, we'll sign off for now. This is Mission Control Houston.